Alright, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Devin from Deadly Art Gaming. For those coming for the first time, welcome. For those coming back, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be going over my last installment of the class overview videos. Uh, so the last class we have is the Rogue, which is the new class that was released not long ago. Uh, so we are going to go over the breakdown of it, the overview, and all that fun stuff here. So uh, but before we get into that, uh, for those, uh, if you do like the content, please smash that like button. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with my guides, my reviews, my live streams, all that fun stuff, please smash that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate it. Definitely helps the channel. Uh, also, uh, I do have a Discord link down below if you want to come join us, uh, chit chat with us about games. Uh, you can be more than happy to join me and other games that I play. I play a kind of wide variety of games. Um, and when multiplayer comes out for Lost Epoch, uh, I'll definitely be playing with my community as well to kind of help y'all get built out, farm stuff, what have you. If you're needing help, I'll, I'll be more than happy to help anybody. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So start out with my blade. This is my blade dancer. Uh, got him to about 77 so far. I haven't been playing with them lately because I've been kind of working on a Warpath build. So um, this one, uh, this is going to be more of a dex oriented character because you're going to be using daggers, you're going to be using dodge, you're going to be using bows, swords, all that kind of stuff. So primarily all the most of the skills kind of lean towards the dex role. So strength will help uh, increase your armor and improve your uh, strength based skills. Dex will do the same for dex based skills but also give you some dodge rating uh, for per point. Intel will help the uh, intelligence-based skills and then ward retention. Attunement will give you mana and improved uh, skills based on attunement. Vitality will be health and um, increased health regen. Uh, then we got your got your health over here, your mana, health regen, mana regen, and movement speed. Uh, experience and then of course all your resistances here uh, I don't have my boots on and all that stuff so my resistance aren't where they need to be so um, not sure why I did that but okay uh, here we'll have a block chance which you shouldn't really be using a shield on a rogue but hey if you want to more, more power to you uh, you got your armor and armor percent uh, stun avoidance, block effectiveness, and this will be your dodge. Mine shows low, but once I start hitting people and stuff, it shoots way up. Uh, ward retention, of course, will be uh, how much ward you'll sit at. I'm at zero, so I generally don't have any idle there. Uh, but if I did get some, it would idle the uh, retention there, or the ward there. Uh, now, also... We got down here on your damage stats, you got your attack speeds, cast speeds, bow, crit strike, multiplier multiplier for your crit strike, stun chance, melee stun chance, damage over time, and then your spell melee, bow, damage, throwing attack, and then the other uh, specific ele uh, element damage, so like physical, lightning, cold, fire, and so on. Uh, then we come into the defensive stats where you got your glancing blow chance, damage leech as health, melee damage leech as health, spell damage, um, then your reflex, and then your damage dealt to mana before health and ward. Uh, you also got your crit strike avoidance, your health gain on hit, melee hit, kill, and block. And then, of course, minions, which you generally pretty much don't have minions here so far. Uh, so you do have, like, mirrors of you where, like, for instance, when I do that, you'll see shadows spawn. But they're not considered... They are considered minions, but they're not considered minions. It's kind of weird uh, the way those that they uh, kind of come up. They... Uh, Mimic can mimic up to three different skills, uh, but I'll go over that stuff here in a moment. 
Um, but this is going to be your minion damage, stuff like that, so you can increase your shadow damage, uh, skill damage there uh, through a different method. Uh, you also got... So anything minion related will be in here. You got your other stats will be your chances. Uh, so bleed, poison, ignite, all that jazz. So you'll have the percentage chance of uh, possible one, two, three stacks type deal. And then how much the ticks are going to be for. Uh, potion slots, health gained on potion use. Uh, increased chance to find potion, mana efficiency. Chance to chill, chance to slow, shock, and then healing effectiveness, and then your cooldown recovery. Uh, so that would be it for that. So let's go ahead and get into the skills, or no, not skills. Let's go do the passes first like normal. Uh, first, you'll start out with the rogue. Uh, these are the skills that you'll get first. Smoke bomb, decoy, and ballista. Um, and then you'll get a few more just from leveling, but this will be as you unlock, as you progress through your points here. Uh, first choice will be Blade Dancer. This is going to be essentially your melee class. Uh, now, before I get into that, I do want to say one thing. As far as the way the rogue is designed, is you can use like your base skills as bow or melee weapon. So like Fury, um, oh, not Fury, sorry, Flurry, Puncture, Shuriken, I mean, all these, uh, Center Strike, they can all be used as bow attacks or melee attacks. So just bear in mind as far as those base skills, you can use them with a bow or uh, melee, which these will all be melee here. And then the bow over here as far as uh, class specifics. Uh, now with the Blade Dancer, if you do pick it, you have plus max, uh, plus one to max shadows. Shadows will repeat one skill you use before vanishing. Uh, shadows can repeat Acid Flash, Shurikens, or Shadow Cascade, uh, and their damage scales with your damage stats. So, uh, and you also get 15% melee damage increase and 15% more dodge rating multiplicative with other modifiers. Uh, so that's where the shadows come into play and then you can get stuff to kind of give you bu uh, buffs to when you uh, to their damage whenever they do their repeat of your skill. Uh, stuff that heals you whenever you uh, Create one stuff like that. So there is a few perks for whenever they spawn and stuff like uh, stuff of that nature. Because uh, like this one will essentially give you another shadow uh, and then shadow damage. Now, as far as like like gear, I will show you this. Like you will have like the damage on. There is some where you can get uh, increase per uh, shadow, which is very helpful um which i don't think i have anything that has that on it um so and then essentially so that's for the blade dancer and that's what i have mastered for this class or this character then you have the marksman which uh you get these skills over here which will be multi-shot quick uh dark quiver uh, hail of arrows and then detonating arrow. Uh, if you do pick this class, uh, using a bow attack grants five percent attack speed. Can stack five times, so essentially uh, up to twenty-five percent increased attack speed. Uh, all stacks fall off after uh, after if you have not used a bow attack recently. Uh, Fifty percent increased damage while using a bow, so it's essentially telling you, hey, you should be using a bow with its class. Um, and the last class will be the Falconer. Uh, from what, like when you go in to choose your class, uh, you can hover over, see the kind of a brief description of it. Uh, from what it's supposed to be geared toward, there's going to be traps, um, and you're supposed to have a minion with you, which is going to be the Falcon. Um, now, if you're going to be able to change the minion to, say, maybe a Sabertooth or a Bear or different types of minions, we don't know yet. 
but that's what they're kind of leaning towards on that doctor. So we'll see whenever that time comes for that. Uh, so now, we're, now the skills. Uh, these are all the base skills. So you'll start out uh, getting flurry, which uh, is a bow or a melee attack that performs three rapid strikes. The last strike can be canceled by moving. Um, that one is very, you can get this one to where it casts very fast. You can channel it or not, but either way, it still casts very fast. Um, shift is your movement skill. That just basically tells you to, for a short fixed distance, um, there is ways of kind of getting that to work well. Like with my build, I used a uh, dancing strike where me hitting things, um, and doing certain things can make me spawn my shadows and then you can see them triggering the uh, cascade just because I used shift or just because I meleeed and my melee proc cascade or if I cast it myself either way you, you'll it'll be pocket that all the time um, then we got Puncture, which is, like I said, it's going to be a bow or a melee attack. Uh, it extends um, extended melee stab or piercing bow attack that has a 30% chance to inflict bleed on hit. Bleeds inflicted by Puncture have a 30% increased damage or duration, sorry. Uh, smoke Bomb is uh, drop a Smoke Bomb at your feet that blinds enemies and grants you haste while you remain inside. The Smoke Bomb grows in size, size at, over the, its duration lasts for seconds. Uh, so this will be kind of a utility of kind of getting out of sticky situations to spawn um, uh, shadows. Uh, just there's quite a few uses out. It's a very useful skill. Uh, you do have a Ballista, which is a minion. Um, this one, I've been kind of working on a Ballista build, which I can get it to work where it's very strong, where it can hit very hard. But it just, the clunkiness of it is kind of where it leaves more to be desired. Uh, so with using that, like I said, it can be now. Once we get multiplayer out, then this will be a big deal. This will be a pretty good uh, setup to use with a group. But as far as solo, it makes it kind of clunky trying to get them set up, staying away from the mobs because these are kind of not tanky rolls. So you're having to stay away, get them all put out, and then they start to kill stuff. So it can get kind of tedious as solo play but it definitely still is viable uh shuriken which is basically throw three shurikens in a cone uh that one there's a few builds out there i was actually thinking about working on one myself i really like the way it looks and the way it play style is uh so i'll probably be starting one of those maybe this weekend or something the shuriken seems really fun um acid flask is throw a throw a flask at, of acid that explodes on impact, uh, poisoning enemies, and reducing their armor. Uh, this is a very pretty good deal uh, spell or uh, ability because essentially you can have it to where a decoy kind of casts it, your shadows cast it, you can throw it, other things get affected by it like with the uh, ballista you can throw the acid black on the ballista which turns the damage for the ballista into poison damage. Um, and then like I said you can get it to where you can get the pool size really huge and they just start overlapping and it kind of could cover the entire screen so it's really fun to kind of work around I've seen a few builds out there that has used it um and it looks really fun uh, i just haven't used it myself uh cinder strike is a melee bow combo with three strikes the first strike uh, also creates a fiery explosion dealing near uh damaging nearby enemies this is also a really good uh and strong skill uh, then you got your decoy, which is essentially throw a device to create a decoy that taunts enemies around it for three seconds uh, uh, after explo uh, exploding. Then when you get into Blade Dancer, that's where you're going to get the melee skills, which is Shadow Cascade, which is a circular attack that um, also uses... Uh, yeah. 
that's also used by your shadow clones requires dual wielding. So that would be essentially that skill, like you'll see whenever the them come up. If I, so I always press T. When I cast it, they cast it. Then we got uh, lethal or synchronized strike, which is essentially kind of somewhat like um, lethal mirage, uh, but essentially this one will uh, you jump forward and you have two. Well, if it would let me hover over it, uh, really stop going away. Jump forward and strike in the area in front of you while shadows appear and simultaneously strike on either side of you requiring melee weapons. So essentially you jump forward and it's going to uh, spawn two, uh, you can uh, upgrade it, um, shadows and they will turn around and hit uh, the enemy as well. So kind of three in one hit type deal. Uh, which is very very powerful. It's really strong and it's a really nice skill. I, I enjoy that one. Um, I kind of had a hard time figuring out which one I like more between uh, Secret Eye Strike and Lethal Mirage. Uh, Lethal Mirage is come immune for a duration and rapidly strike nearby targets with Mirages. Uh, I kind of went with Mirage because it pairs well with not only defensive because it makes you immune for uh, a period of time so if you're in a sticky situation you could pop it real quick and it's going to do a ton of damage to the enemies but it also can kill enough mobs to possibly or give you enough time to for that duration of the immunity to be able to have your shift become available to get out of there type deal so you pop it and then shift out uh so it I, I like this because it does a, a lot of damage, especially with bosses, um, and it can be very paired well with a few other abilities. Um, and then you've got Dancing Strike, which is uh, a series of fast dash attacks requiring dual wield. I like this one just because it looks more like a, uh, like an assassin where he's kind of bouncing around, stabbing people and swinging and slashing and just cutting through stuff, so... I just like that. It seems pretty interesting, uh, fun to me. Um, then we're going to get into Marksman. We have the multi-shot, which is pretty much a generic multi-shot. Uh, a bow attack that fires a cone of five arrows to target direction. Uh, aiming the cursor further from your character reduces the spread. Um, now... This is a pretty good spell because you can actually get it to where uh, you could shoot up to, I think it was 16 arrows with all the different bonuses and upgrades you can do with the skill, the bow that you can get because you can essentially get a, no, nope, I think I have, or I had it and I think I actually lost, I NPC'd it by accident. Yeah, I got rid of it, I forgot. Uh, so you get a bow that can increase how many shots you inside the spec of it. You can actually increase how many are shot, um, and a few other things that you could do to increase it more, um, which is really nice. And it does pair very well with uh, I think it was flurry. Yes, uh, flurry. You can come over here and have it to where you one it turns into a channel. But every fourth shot, it will shoot the multi shot for you. So instead of it just being a single target shot, it can every fourth shot, it will spread, and you're shooting so fast, so it's always doing it's doing the multi shot quite often, um, and single target. So it kind of a two in one thing uh, works really well. But that's the downside is that it turns it into a channeling skill. Um, Dark Quiver is summon seven dark, uh, black arrows that rain from the sky over four seconds, granting 100% increased damage to your next bow attack when retrieved. So essentially, uh, there's going to be some arrows that will start dropping on the ground. Uh, you have to actually go run and pick it up to use it. So you'll run over, pick one up, and then that next shot 
will have the increase. It won't be the next couple. It'll just be that one shot. So you'll pick one up, shoot, pick one up, shoot, pick one up, shoot. So now you can kind of get it set up to where it kind of shoots for you or it has them periodically come down for you where you don't always have to have it keep passing it. Where every once in a while you'll have a bonus without having to really try. Um, so... That's the only thing I didn't really like about it because I would always forget about them and I'd, I'd cast it and I'd have to go run around, shoot, run around, shoot. And get a little bit tedious, so. Because um, the spread of them dropping is quite uh, kind of big. Uh, hail of Arrows. Uh, launch a Hail of Arrows into the sky that rained down on the target. Location over three and a half seconds. Now this one's a pretty good skill because you can actually get it to where it rains down uh, And you kind of change up the aspects of it. So you can turn it from physical into poison um, And all kinds of other things because it pairs well with this bow The bow gives you a hundred percent poison damage a hunt oil max a hundred uh, Oh gotta love that glitch um you can have increased poison damage, 100% hail damage, uh, hail of arrows, damage converted to poison. So pretty much all the damage is going to be converted to poison. Uh, increased hail, uh, hail of arrow duration. Armor shred, hundred and like this one has 119% armor shred on bow hit, and then 93% armor shred effect. That is pretty nice to not only have Increasing the, the poison, the all the damage being converted to poison, and then also uh, a pretty decent chunk uh, of armor shred on it as well. Uh, so it's a pretty good uh, setup there when you're going with poison. So, and then last but not least, we have detonating aerial. This is a lightning strike that comes out, shoots out, and then explodes whenever it hits the enemy. Uh, fires an arrow that embeds itself in a target that explodes after 0.6 seconds. All added bow damage is converted to lightning. Added bow damage applies to the explosion at 150% effectiveness. So, uh, pretty good skill. I mean, I tried out was kind of working that on my I'm working on a marksman I just really have to decide which way I want to go uh, as far as my first build that I'm gonna make for the marksman so um, I'll be working on that here soon uh, but so far that is gonna be it for it because like I said we don't have the Falcon to go over yet um, so that leaves us there there we go And the other bow that I was talking about, like with the Ballista, this would be the unique bow for the Ballista build because it gives you uh, plus two maximum Ballista so you can have, without increased specs on the, in the spec of it, you can have up to four instead of two. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, that is the overview of the class. Uh, so far, I've been really enjoying the class uh, since they re released it. Uh, there are a few tweaks that they are going to do to it because there are a few of the things on there that is way overpowered, uh, but not too horrible from what I've seen in other games and stuff as far as release of classes where they're just completely messed up. So uh, I think they did a really good job with the Rogue. Uh, didn't have as many issues as I was kind of uh, expecting it to have. And it was pretty somewhat okay balanced. Uh, they could have done a little bit better on it, um, but I think they still did a great job. Uh, so uh, if you did like the content, please smash that like button. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with my guides and my live streams and my reviews and all that fun stuff uh, smash that subscribe button it helps the channel uh, also if you could leave a comment of what you think of uh, I'd like y'all's input on videos to come uh, if y'all want me to cover anything as far as guides on the game I've already got like a beginner's guide uh, crafting guide stuff like that so if y'all have anything in mind that y'all think uh, I should make a video over, kind of explain on, or 
run or whatever the case may be, just let me know. Uh, leave it in the comment down below. Um, and like I said, I do have a Discord link down below. Uh, feel free to join us. Uh, chit chat with us, and I'll be more than happy you can join me playing games. I'll come join you if I have a game. Uh, but other than that, my name is Devin from Deadly Art Gaming, and you all have a great one.